So we have a function, f of x equals 4x plus 5, and they tell us it's a one-to-one -one function, which means this function has an inverse. So the first thing we do is replace this notation f of x with the letter y. It means exactly the same thing, it's just easier to work with. So the next thing we're going to do to find an inverse is we're going to switch x and y. So everywhere I have a y, I write an x. Everywhere I have an x, I write a y. Let me fix that. It's supposed to be a 5 right there. So now I'm going to solve it for y by subtracting 5. And then I get x minus 5 equals 4y. I still need y by itself, so I divide by 4. So x minus 5 over 4 equals y. Now since this, this is the inverse of f of x, we're going to write it f inverse of x. That's what the little negative 1 means. It means an inverse. So it's x minus 5 over 4. Now we have no limitations on our domain here. Look at your original function. There are no square roots. There are no denominators. And there are no logarithms. And look, that's true for this one as well. So our domain is negative infinity to positive infinity, and they describe that as for all x. Okay. So when you look at the multiple choices, you're looking for the one that says for all x. So that's going to be uh, answer C. Now to verify, verifying inverse functions. So here's how an inverse function works. Here's our function. We'll call it f. It has something going in, input, and something coming out. Okay, here is our inverse function. Whatever's coming out is going in here, and whatever comes out is what went in originally. So let me put some numbers to this. Let's say we put a 2 in our function and a 5 came out. So that would be the ordered pair 2 input, 5 output. And then if we make this 5 the input into F inverse, see this 5 is going to go in this machine, and guess what? It's going to come out as a 2. So look, it reverses ordered pairs. Now, if we call this first input x, and our first output y, y becomes the input here, and x becomes the output here. So if there's a point x, y on f, then there's a point y, x on f inverse. So it reverses the ordered pairs. So to prove it, I take my original function. Then I take my inverse function. Let me write it with a function notation. This is f of x. This is f inverse of x. And what we know is that f of f inverse of x comes out as x. So our inverse was x minus 5 divided by 4. So if I put f inverse of x into f of x, that means f of this whole expression
So inside of f, which is 4x plus 5, I have to put x minus 5 over 4. Now because this is a times here, I can re uh, reduce those two 4s, and that gives me x minus 5 plus 5, which gives me x. So look, I have verified this. That's why they call it, um, they call it verifying. When you prove that f of f inverse is x, you're verifying your inverse is correct. Now we're going to do it the other way. So I've got f of x is 4x plus 5, and f inverse of x is x minus 5 divided by 4. Now I'm going to do f inverse of f of x. That means inside of f inverse, I'm going to put this whole expression for f of x. See, this is f of x, and it's going into f inverse. That means everywhere there's an x in f inverse, I have to put 4x plus 5. So look, it's x minus 5 over 4, and I had to put 4x plus 5 instead of that x right there. All right, and so the 5s will cancel out, and I'm left with a 4x divided by 4. The 4s will divide out, and I'm left with x again. So I have verified it. I have verified f inverse of x. So now I know that this is the correct inverse. Now, the last part of the question just has you uh, check that it's verified. So be sure that you say it's verified. So a little quick review. The first thing you do is you replace this f of x with this letter y. Then you reverse your x and your y. So it was y equals 4x. Now it's x equals 4y. Then we solve for y, so we work this all the way down until we get y by itself, and this is our inverse. So that's what, why we wrote it as f inverse. Now, they ask us, when is this inverse true? Well, it's true for all x because there's no restriction on what x can be because that denominator is, is a variable is not a variable, it's 4. So uh, even though we have a denominator here, it can never be 0 because it's always 4. So that's going to be, this is what we believe is our inverse. Okay, This expression right here is what we believe is our inverse. Okay, Then they ask us to verify it. Well, to verify it, you put f into f inverse, or we could do it the other way, f inverse into f, okay? So in this case, we're, we're taking f, and we're, then we're putting it into f inverse. So that's this expression, f into f inverse. All right, so here's f, here's f inverse. So instead of this x, see, this was a 4x, but instead of the x, I put the f inverse. And then when I reduce it down, it always comes out. If it's an inverse, it'll always come out to just a plain letter x. Then we did it in the reverse order where we put f inverse, I'm sorry, f of x into f inverse, right? So here's f inverse, here's its x. So instead of its x, which was x minus 5, we put this whole thing, 4x plus 5, and it came down to x. So that means we have verified that our inverse is correct.